and gentlemen, this is the main event, the fight of the night. Please welcome to the ring now, the reigning British featherweight champion from Hereford, Dazzo Williams. Well, Dazzo Williams is a Londoner but based very much these days in Hereford and very much away from home here because Nicky Cook is a Dagenham fighter and we're in Dagenham tonight. Well, he's got a Lonsdale belt to keep and you have to have four British Championship wins to get that. But his crown is on the line here as well as Cook's European and Commonwealth titles. He's a brave determined operator who's not to be underestimated, Jim. No, I have nothing but respect for Dazza Williams. When he first came on the scene, they turned pro. I didn't tip him as a uh, title quality, but he's won the British title. He's hung on to it often enough to win himself a Lonsdale belt. And some wonderful fighters in this country would have loved a Lonsdale belt and will never get one. This man has done that. Uh, and as I say, full credit to him, he always gives him his best. He's been maybe fortunate a couple of times with decisions, but that doesn't count in the record books. But he's going to have to be a bit smart, I think, to take this man's title. Nicky Cook on his way. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the ring the reigning European and Commonwealth for the weight champion from Dagenham, Nicky Cool. Big support tonight for Nicky Cook, who's won all 24 of his fights to date. Commonwealth and European champion, though not especially impressive. Last time we saw him against the hard-headed Frenchman Johnny Baig back in October. That was a bit of a laboured win. Having said that, he always seems to work out a way to prevail. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I think that's the sign of a good fight. Because when he wins a fight fairly clearly, he's not happy. His corner's not happy because they know they can do so much better. I think in this business, it's good policy to be your own worst critic. And I think that's what Nicky Cook's like. But I think he's genuinely heading towards world class. I don't say he's quite world class at the moment, but I think he has the potential to be. And I see him as a pretty hot favourite tonight to become a triple champion. Tail of the tape. Dazza Williams is six years older, 31. That's a bit of a surprise. He's taller as well, has a very slight reach advantage. Both of them a few ounces inside the nine stone limit. Cook's had more fights and generally at a better level as well. A few more rounds and he's got the better knockout percentage as well. 58 playing 21 here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event, the fight of the night. Barry Hearn for Matchroom Sport presents for your entertainment 12 rounds of boxing for the European, Commonwealth and British Footballweight Championships. Sponsored here by Lantern Recovery Specialist PLC and Pokemillion.com for a great game of online poker. A very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live and exclusive here on Sky Sports. You've joined us for the very best ringside seat in the business. All the officials have been appointed by the EBU and the British Boxing Board of Control here present at ringside, our supervisor, the General Secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control from Cardiff, Mr. Simon Block. Our timekeeper at the bell is Mr. Greg Hume. And all three scoring judges are from England. Richie Davis, Larry O'Connell and Terry O'Connor. Referee in charge of the action from Wellingborough is Mr. John Keane. They are the officials 
Here are the contestants. And firstly, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the white trunks trimmed with black, weighed in at eight stone, 13 pounds, three ounces. 14 fight record, 12 wins, three inside the scheduled distance, and only two defeats. Coming to the ring as the reigning and defending British featherweight champion, he's from beautiful Hereford. Please welcome Dazzle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, weighing in at eight stone, 13 pounds, 14 ounces, he is undefeated. 24 contests, 24 wins, 14 inside the scheduled distance. He is the reigning and defending European and Commonwealth featherweight champion. Please welcome home to Dagenham. It's Nicky Cool! So, sports fans and Sky Sports fans, let's get the action underway then. 12 rounds of boxing for the European, Commonwealth and British Featherweight Championships. You can see the instructions in the dressing room. You know what I expect of you. Shake hands and come out boxing. Well, this follows on just a couple of weeks between the big domestic dust-up at world title level between Scott Harrison and Michael Brody. Brody retiring after his defeat in that fight. And now a triple title belt with Nicky Cook and Dazzo Williams. Cook at home, unbeaten, and in the black trunks here. And fresh from doing two weeks of his training in Tenerife where Nigel Ben used to do his training running up Mount Tidy a 12,000 feet mountain so should be in tip-top shape for this although he's always a little bit tight at the weight cookie is a big big featherweight good body shots early on from Nicky Cook. Williams, who might have to work for this one, he's been a slightly fortunate, we felt, with a couple of his British, British title wins over Roy Rutherford the first time and John Simpson, but he was good in the second fight with Rutherford and against Jamie McKeever as well. He's been pretty good value as Dazzo. Ben, he's always in great shape. Uh, Steve Robinson gets him in great shape so he can start closing the gap sometimes in the later stages of fights when the other fellas go tired. But uh, I would imagine Nicky Cook will be excellent shape for this one tonight. Cook really targeting the rib cage with his hooks early on. Well, I think Cook has laid out his stall. I think he's showing Williams that no, it's not a fancy Dan boxing match. They're going to have to stand here and do better than I'm doing. Again, hooks to the body. Cook ranked number three, by the way, by the WBO, four by the WBC, and maybe more realistic 12 by the IBF. But uh, he's aiming to get himself a world title shot against Scott Harrison, Scotland's WBO champion. Got to win this first. I would imagine Scott Harrison will be looking across the pond by now. But uh, still, it's not impossible, it's not a fight that couldn't be made. Sharp start this from Cook. In a hall packed with his family, friends and supporters. <laughs> William is just struggling a little bit with the sharpness. I think most fighters going into a title fight, they imagine in their mind, I'm going to have a little look in the first three minutes or so, just try things out, see when the other fellow really starts so quickly, it shocks you, takes you out of your stride a little bit. So now, as we head towards the end of the round, William's starting to react, but it's a little bit, just too little too late. Just a feeling in the Nicky Cook camp, I think, that they want to make a little statement to hear. Cook's opening round. 
Welcome back to what is proving a quite atmospheric Goresbrook centre in Dagenham. Look at the number of body shots landed in the opening round by Nicky Cook. Yeah, and a couple of times uh, William has pulled a face with the shots that were going behind the elbow. He's very, when he puts his arms to the front, I mean, Steve Robinson was good at this, but he shielded the side as well, but there's plenty of target behind the elbows. That's where Cook's looking. Gazzo Williams, a former soldier with the Royal Fusiliers. Like trunks for the man from Hereford, looking for the uppercut there on the inside. The victory in this fight will be worth a lot of money for these two fighters because they can really cash in on these crowns. The European, particularly, is a good little earner on its own right. Again, the body punching of Nicky Cook looking quite hurtful. Yeah, Cook is making Williams fight, his style of fight. I think Williams would have liked a couple of rounds, boxing, finding range, thinking his way around. He knows that's not on the cards. He's having to react to Cook, but I don't think he's too comfortable with it. Good job from Cook. Again, thumping in the shots to the rib cage, then looking for uppercuts through the middle. It's a fast start, this, by the Commonwealth and European champion up against the British title holder. If you watch when Williams get, gets his elbows in to protect his body, they're a little bit too close together, and he's shown target behind there. Just You can see the target that's behind the elbow. He just wants to open his elbow slightly and partially block the punches. See, again, too much target behind the elbow. This is, this is good stuff from Nicky Cook. This is something they've obviously picked up from watching Dazzo Williams off tape, isn't it? It's obviously very much part of the game plan. Yeah, but well, you can see when he pushes his hands down, his elbows are too close, guarding his stomach, if you like, and there's loads of target behind the elbow. There it is again. Oh, and it's a great left hook to the body, flooring Dazzo Williams in the second round. That's knocked a lot out of him, and is he going to be able to get up from that? He's going to try. No, he's counted out in round two. It's a spectacular try out that for Nicky Cook, who is now... Commonwealth, European, and add British champion. And the way he did that had a hint of world blaster about it. Well, I don't know if he came in to the fight with that plan of the punches behind the elbow, but straight from the off, it was fairly obvious there was loads of target there. I don't know if he thought about it before the fight, as the fight was made, or when he came into the ring and they spotted it. But I tell you what, that was a job really well executed. That was a wonderful performance. We have to keep in mind, keep it in context. This is the British champion he's beaten. A British champion who's not amongst the, the, the top two or three in the country. But nevertheless, that was a class performance. We'll call it world class, but that was a class performance. I mean, you can see the way he was finding the target. Bang! I mean, he, he laid out the warning several times. But that really was a finisher. You can see he pulled a couple of paces in the previous round there, uh, Williams. So uh, Nicky Cook knew what was there, and bang, look at the target there. Couldn't miss that. Terrific punch, that. It really was a memorable punch, and there was no way back from there for Dazzo Williams, who loses his British title here, much to the delight of the sizable Nicky Cook fan club here. Well, he's, uh, he's got those rankings I was telling you about. Four WBC, three WBO, 12 IBF. Now, that doesn't look quite so far-fetched, does it? Look, he's making impressions somewhere, and quite rightly so. The WBC always rate the European champion fairly highly. But uh, I don't know if they're in too much of a hurry to chase him to the next step. Maybe another year at this level, but that was an outstanding performance, outstanding punching. Cook, by the way, who survived a bad car crash last year. His car overturned with his father-in-law in the car as well. He only damaged the shoulder. It could have been a lot worse. And he survives for a glory night like this one. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Greg Hugh at ringside has recorded a time of two minutes. One second of the second round on a count out. Your winner, and the new British and still Commonwealth and European featherweight champion from Dagenham, it's Nicky Cool.
please show your appreciation for the former British champion from Hereford, Basil Williams. Nicky, good way to win the British title. Yeah, it's lovely. Oh, that was, I'm ecstatic over that winning stake. I, was, I was, thought it was going to be an hard night. I knew I was going to go in here and win. I knew I'd be a bit too strong for him and uh, my body shots will came up. But, uh, Body shots were the tactics beforehand. The tactics, and, and that is my style. And uh, I've said to you and Jez and me, and me dad, we all said we, we, I belong in world class now. And I proved it there. I've had two jobs on a British champion and uh, convincedly, and um, I'm ready for a world title. We can show you that finishing punch. Talk us through it. Oh, yeah, there will be no answer for that one. Yeah, there will be no answer for it. I swivel through a right hand, I missed him, I kind of swivel all the way around like we do in the gym. Every, every punch I turn, yeah, turn your body, yeah, then it. back yeah, round. Yeah. And uh, it you knew then it was all over? Uh, no, I knew I hit him with a good shot, and he went down. I thought he might make it up, but uh, I didn't, didn't know how much of a good shot it was. I felt the power go, but uh, there's a lot more power led to come out. Were you surprised how easy it was tonight? Uh, it wasn't easy. I mean, in the first round, it was, it was a good round. I mean, he, he came out to fight, but. Uh, my power just revealed over the night and uh, I got on top uh, earlier than I thought I was going to. I've worked with your manager, Jess Harding. What's next for him? Ed, I've said it for a long, long time. I'm sitting next to the best featherweight in the country. If they want to prove it's Scott Harrison... That includes include Scott Harrison. Including Scott Harrison. You see tonight, I don't think Scott Harrison would have done that tonight. He's the best featherweight in this country and I've said it for such a long, long, long time. So, you know, we want a world title fight. Where it's going to come from, how we're going to get it, that's sort of going to take a bit of time. But if Scott Harrison wants to fight Nicky Cook, not a problem at all in the world. Nicky, do you fancy that fight with Scott Harrison? Yes, please, Scott. Come and uh, give me a challenge and I'll fire. And uh, it's about time a good looking fella at the uh, WBO. Let me have it. Well done tonight. <laughs>